dropped him. Right there, baby. Hey guys, I did a little target shooting with my muzzle loader today, so I thought I'd shoot a quick video on how I like to clean my muzzle loader. So this model is an Acura. Um, it's got a Bergera barrel on it, and uh, I'm just going to show you the method that I typically like to use to clean it out after I'm done shooting it. So it's important to know that a muzzle loader is different than a regular rifle. If you don't clean out your muzzle loader within a day or two, you can actually do damage to the internal components and just the consistency of the rifling. You can have pitting and uh, rust and all kinds of things can happen to your barrel. So it's just a good idea to go ahead and clean it out as quickly as you can when you get back from your hunt or from your target session. So this one in particular, there's just a little screw right here. Really only one screw holds this whole thing together. And take out that screw. And I can pull off this grip. And then I can break the barrel by pushing this, on, pulling on this lever, and then it just hinges out. And so there's the trigger and the uh, um, the trigger and the action up there, and this is the components of the barrel. And so next, um, I'm going to remove this breech plug here. So sometimes you can get this out by hand. Uh, most of the time, I use take some sort of a tool and just to get it to uh, loosen up. And one thing you want to really make sure though is you'll see on here, I've got some grease on here on these threads. And they claim that if you don't put grease on those threads when you shoot, you can actually seize these together permanently. And I suppose you'd have to send it back to the factory to see if they can even get it apart. Alright, so that's completely taken apart now, and so I just have an empty barrel. Alright, the next step seems a little weird, but it actually works really well. So CVA makes this uh, barrel blaster cleaner. It's like a foam spray, and um, I've discovered it works best to put this into a trash can. Uh, so I've got the whole barrel in there, and you put this in this area here, just to kind of stick it into the barrel. And you basically it's pushed down on the top and it will fill up with this foam stuff all the way to the bottom. So that's why I'm putting it into this trash can. Just want to make sure you have it foaming out the bottom and the top. And then you just let them let it sit there for several minutes. So I'll turn off the camera for a little bit. So while that barrel cleaner is dissolving and working on cleaning that barrel. Um, I'm going to take the breech plug here, and I've got some Barrel Blaster Parts Soaker. Now, different manufacturers have different versions of this, but basically you just need something to soak this in. It's some sort of a solution that will dissolve the residue from the black powder. So I'm also going to let that sit for several minutes. And then the other thing I like to use... See, here's another one of those brand. This one's almost gone, so that's why I bought a different one. Um, breech plug cleaner, solvent, and container. So that's the same thing as I just put the breech in. Just a different brand. And then I like to use um, pre-saturated cleaning patches for muzzle loaders, which just means that they're patches, but they're already soaked with a uh, chemical that will also dissolve black powder and the residue from shooting. And so while those are while those are soaking, I like to take these and come in here where the firing pin comes in and this is where it strikes the back of the primer 
And I like to go ahead and um, use these pre-saturated ones to go ahead and first of all kind of moisten it up, let it dissolve for a few minutes, just kind of work at it. You can also use like an old toothbrush or even uh, Q-tips, things like that. Now they do recommend periodically completely taking this apart and um, cleaning this mechanism. Um, I rarely ever do that. Uh, I find this, you know, I don't shoot the muzzle loader that often. Just a few shots to make sure I'm hitting accurately and then one or two shots in the season hopefully to get an animal. So I'm not shooting this like I would a normal target rifle where I'm shooting hundreds of rounds. Um, but just if you check with your manufacturer on how you should take take this apart and clean that out. I never really mess with it. So if you can see down in here, that's kind of what you're looking for. I mean, this was all corroded and black looking. And now I've got it back down to um, the finish that you see on the outside here. So that should be sufficient for this part. I'll put a little oil on it when I put it all back together. All right, so I'm gonna check out this breech. It's been soaking in there for, I guess, around five to maybe eight minutes. And it's kind of cool to see how that starts to just dissolve that black powder residue. And so now I've got just an old toothbrush. Pretty easy to go ahead and kind of work that completely loose. Clean off the threads. Just try to get this thing to where it looks brand new again as, as best as you can. So it looks like um, polished metal, nothing, no black residue left on there. So you have to rinse it a few times. And they've made it to where it's got a little, like a little tray where you can just pick this up and it'll retrieve whatever parts you've put down in there. So you can see how much cleaner that is already after just soaking it for a little bit and then scrubbing it once. So I'm going to go ahead and scrub it a few more times. Especially right in here, it tends to really cake on right there. I mean, that's right where the um, the spark from the primer is coming in contact with that black powder. So I don't know if it gets extremely hot right there or what, but that just seems to really cake on right in that spot. Okay, I've got some Q-tips to go ahead and go down where the primer goes. And then something I like to use, this is more commonly used with the old school muzzle loaders where you have a percussion cap. Um, but this is just a, a tool that's got a little uh, wire that you can push this forward and the wire extends. And you can go down and you can make sure that you've cleaned out where that explosion happens when the primer goes off. And especially this little hole right here. I'm going to rinse it again. Okay, so that's starting to look pretty good now. So now I'm just going to take some cleaning patches. You could use paper towels, but you don't want to use ones that kind of deteriorate and turn into fuzz on your parts. So that'd be shop towels or something, but uh, patches work well because they stay together. Okay, so now the next little step is something that I've come up with. I don't know if anyone else does this. Maybe you're not supposed to. So uh, at your own risk, you can do this. But after it's relatively clean, to me, it seems like there's a lot of moisture inside of there because this is some sort of a water-based cleaner. And I don't like to leave that completely in there. And so if you just go ahead and super clean this off and then basically blow through there, I guess you could use an air compressor too, it'd probably be smarter. But blow a bunch of air through there and you'll see I'll get a bunch of stuff coming out that little hole. So you can see how it kind of purges that out, helps to clean that out. So I'm taking this ramrod that's from the barrel. I'm gonna use that for the cleaning steps. And so 
The first thing I'm going to do is take a caliber specific, this 50 caliber brush, and I'm going to scrub inside my barrel. back and forth a few times. This will get down into the rifling, the grooves inside the barrel, kind of knock anything loose. And then we'll switch to cleaning patches. The next thing I want to do is kind of clean off, there's some excess breech plug grease right here where these threads are. Kind of clean that up as best you can. And so this works pretty well um, for kind of an inexpensive way to kind of work on guns. It's the Caldwell 7 rest. So the next thing I'm going to use is the um, ramrod that you use to load the muzzle loader that's typically right here in the barrel. Um, I like to just use this for cleaning. Some guys have separate rods for, you know, a range rod or a cleaning rod, but this works just fine. You just need some different attachments for it to clean. It just needs to have a little bit of length so you can push the patch all the way through. And so next I'm going to go ahead and use some more of these pre-saturated pads. And then technically you probably don't have to use pre-saturated ones if you use this barrel blaster foam but uh, I like to just hit it with multiple solvents. All right, so I push that patch through. And you can see it comes out nasty, completely black. So you don't want to do this job over like carpet or something like that. Wherever it leaks out, kind of clean it up as you go. patch. So you basically push this right on that jig and you kind of put it right in the center. That goes into your barrel. And then you can push that through. So after the first one I like to just take uh, several of these and just work them back and forth. Make sure you go in the entire length, all the different sections of it. And get a good thorough scrubbing. And you'll just you'll just have to do several of these and just keep going and keep going until these patches start coming out clean. Um, you can use these patches twice if you flip it over and uh, use the rod on the other side like this. You can uh, use them twice. But I'll go ahead and do that off camera until those things start coming out clean. All right, so the pre-saturated moist patches were coming out pretty clean, so I'm gonna to switch to a dry patch now. I'm gonna run a couple of those through here. I just think it's probably a good idea to get rid of that cleaner, the pre-saturated, uh, like I said, it's water-based. I wanna get all that out of there. So I'll do that a few more times off camera. All right, so my patches are coming out almost spotless now, so I'm just gonna take one more of these uh, brand new pre-saturated moist patches and I'm going to kind of just wipe off the whole barrel. I'm going to pay close attention to the crown of the barrel. Try to keep this. Um, if you kind of read about the um, things that make that the um, rifle the most accurate is right as where the bullet leaves the barrel. So try to make sure this gets really clean in all your rifles and try not to damage it with cleaning or bumping it into rocks or whatever on the back I'm going to go ahead and clean this off a little bit more anywhere that you see any black powder residue it's crazy where you'll see it kind of form on the rifle I think I only shot five times today and uh, it just gets everywhere so it's not something I like to I wouldn't really want to do a lot of target shooting with muzzleloader because then you get an hour worth of cleaning when you get back. If 
you find any black powder residue or anything from when you're cleaning and handling it, it gets to the barrel. These pre-saturated patches work well to clean that off. Alright, so then if you hold this up to the light and look through it, um, I mean it looks spotless, nice and shiny in there, that's what you're looking for. And so the next thing that I like to do that they definitely recommend is barrel blaster rust prevention patches. Really it's just a patch that's got a little bit of gun oil on it. So with the muzzle loader, I like to um, do most of the inserting of the ramrod from the front, mostly because this is threaded back here and there's still some of that um, breech plug grease in there. And so if you start pushing um, from this way in, you're going to push some of that grease back up into the barrel. So I don't like to do that. Um, when you kind of read a little bit about um, regular rifles where you can take the bolt, like a bolt action rifle, they recommend cleaning it from the back of the barrel. That way you um, have less risk of damaging the crown, the tip of the barrel. All right, so I'm gonna work this oily patch through there, and that should be sufficient for uh, rust prevention inside there. And then I'm gonna take another one of these, and I like to just go ahead and wipe down the entire surface, get just a little coat of that oil everywhere. So one other thing to keep in mind, I will share my experience with this muzzle loader. So this is spotless clean in here, it's oily, it's nice and good and clean. If you go to take your very first shot with one of these with a super clean barrel like this, it doesn't typically hit in the same spot as if you take one or two shots. So in my experience, it's best to take like one shot to foul up your barrel. It sounds crazy, but with these, uh, I shoot the Power Belt Platinums and I've seen more consistent shots after I take my first shot. So you get maybe another four or five shots and then you need to go ahead and kind of swab out your barrel and clean it a little bit. But my best accuracy is on my second, third, and fourth shot of a barrel like this. <clears throat> so I'm also going to take one of these little rust prevention oil soaked patches. Kind of scrub around all this area one final cleaning step but it also is leaving a little residue of oil on there. Okay so one more thing to not forget to do. So I told you before that they recommend anti-seize to put on the um, breech plug. So this is kind of like a huge thing of chapstick or like um, my kids glue when they do crafts. It kind of looks like that. It's a dispenser. You rotate this and it kind of works its way out. And so I take this and I put a fairly liberal amount on all of these threads. Trying to not get it here and not plug up my little flash hole right there where the primer goes through. and then we can go ahead and put that back in. Now I never really tighten this down other than as finger tight as I can get it with my fingers um, because you saw when I went to take it apart, even though I put it together like this, even when, when you shoot it a few times, it's hard to get that thing to come off. So um, just finger tight is how I work with these CVA muzzle loaders like this. Wiping off any excess um, breech plug grease that kind of comes out and now we are ready to reassemble. Alright time to reassemble. So it's got this cut out here and there's basically a pin right inside there. You line those two back up, snap that back in place. Where it's not all 
tangled up. Line up your hole there for the screw. Typically take one last patch and <clears throat> wipe down the ramrod. And then put that back in place. And so we should be good to go. And then I'll just do a final test to make sure everything seems to be working properly. We can even do a dry fire on it. Trigger seems to be functioning properly. So that's pretty much it. Um, you can kind of go ahead and wipe it down a little bit more um, with like a oily rag if you've got, uh, this is still pretty clean so I'm not gonna really worry about that. Uh, periodically I'll put just a little bit of uh, regular gun oil on some of these mechanical components. Alrighty guys, that's how I like to clean out my muzzleloader. This thing is probably around seven or eight years old, and uh, that cleaning technique has been keeping it going. I shoot it uh, pretty much every year, and it's still nice and accurate. Um, today I shot a video of shooting from 100 out to 200 yards, and it was uh, doing pretty well. So check out that video. Um, but I hope you guys learned a lot. Um, also check out with your manufacturers um, what they recommend for your specific model on how to clean, especially the internal components like that. Um, but uh, have fun hunting, and if you learned something, we sure would appreciate it if you give us a like and a subscribe.